Here's an interesting item that belongs strictly to the entertainment industry. It's a Colorflex dimmer unit that is uh, made by a company called City Theatrical, quite a famous company within the entertainment industry for making uh, DMX receivers and LED drivers. And they also make a popular tool that I'll probably feature some other point in time called the DMX Cat. And this is a very useful device that can plug into lighting networks and then you can interrogate and change the settings and test, in my case, uh, lights in situ. Very, very useful tool. But this unit here is part of their multiverse DMX transmission system. And it means that this unit receives a radio signal and you've got uh, five dimmable outputs uh, directly referenced to the power supplied. Or it can also put out or receive DMX on this connector, which is a uh, RS-485 level uh, communication protocol used in the entertainment industry. Um, and this device has been giving us trouble on the job. It's, I think it's a refined product, but it's not quite refined to the end yet. And we may have been using it in a, a very RF noisy environment, I'm guessing. It's the only way I can think that we've had problems with these dropping off the network, which has been unfun. But let's explore it and we'll see what the construction's like. So if I open this up, let's just cut straight to the chase here. I can take the antenna off here. You can put on an extension antenna if needed. We ended up putting on extension antennas to try and resolve the problems. It didn't resolve the problems completely. And I shall loosen this off and get a screwdriver and pop the lid off it. This is going to be one of these products that is largely software based. Based on the sort of stuff you find in City Theatrical products, it will be logically designed and sensibly designed. Uh, but with all the magic sauce being in the software, that's like most products these days, isn't it? This incidentally is off uh, 4003 riser. It, we've had illuminated platforms that go out onto the arena and they've got video all on them that's tr triggered by the DMX. But we've also got illuminated LED strip around the outside of it and underneath for glow. And those have been locking uh, at times. So if I open it up, it reveals... A big processor, the RF module, the antenna connection, and one, two, three, four, five MOSFETs for driving the output from the vicinity. Let's take a look at the back. I'll tell you what, I'll take a picture of this, right? And we'll analyze the circuitry and see if it's interesting and how well built it is. One moment, please. Let's start with the exciting side of this, which is where all the bulk of the components are placed. We have an ST microcontroller, and we also have the RF reception model. This is a 2.4 gigahertz reception model, which is the frequency that we tend to use for this stuff in the UK. But there is another module available for American use, which is 900 megahertz operation. And there are modules floating about with one of each of these modules uh, in it. Um, here are the MOSFETs, and here are the current sense resistors. That's one good thing about these. It has fast current sensing, it will also indicate the uh, current being drawn by the unit. You can interrogate it remotely and it will give you lots of information about its status, including the signal strength and the quality of the data. This is good. Didn't totally help us in this situation at the moment, but that's okay. So we've got the MOSFETs, the current sense resistors, and uh, someone recently asked, what well, what is the purpose of a current sense resistor? Uh, when you have current flowing through a resistor of a given value, the voltage across that resistor will increase with the amount of current. So by measuring the voltage across it, which is easily measured by microcontrollers, you can tell how much current is flowing through the circuit. And that's what's used here. So if it exceeds the level that these MOSFETs are designed for, I think this is uh, rated for about 2.5 amps per channel. 4 amps max per output. Okay, 12.5 amps for the device maximum. Um, but if you exceed the level, it will actually shut the channel down as protection. I think I've never actually done that. I've never actually exceeded the level. There are also what look like thermistors next to each MOSFET, which is also very good. If it detects the temperatures getting too high in the vicinity, it will also provide remote warning if needed and also uh, shut the uh, MOSFETs down to protect them against damage. Here is the USB port for powering the unit. Here is the uh, RS485 port, which is the DMX input and output. 
with its little driver there. And this is a protection diode, I'd guess, which is probably to protect against erroneous voltages on that port. The microcontroller, where all the secret sauce is stored, well, maybe all the secret sauce is stored in here, has a 32 megabit memory chip associated with it. It's notable that there is a programming port here, a programming port here, and a programming port here. This one is presumably for the uh, multiverse receiver. Um, this one will be for the 900 megahertz multiverse receiver, and this one will be for the main chip for programming it. Um, this inductor is most likely associated with the power supply. Is there anything else on this side that's worth looking at? Uh, this, I'm not sure about. The radio geeks will know what this is. Could it be for combining two frequencies onto a single antenna? Not sure. It does look as though it's designed to take the antennas, and it could be there's a bridge from here and, say, a bridge from there, and then it puts a common out. I do not know. Radio is not my uh, era of expertise. But let's take a look at the back. The back has notable components. Here is the output uh, from the MOSFETs, and they do have a capacitor and a snubber protection diode, a back EMF type diode across it. So that suggests these may be suitable for inductive loads, or certainly it's going to help with any transient inductance you get in things. Most of these are used to drive LEDs. Um, here is a fuse and a diode, polarity protection diode, going from the common positive rail here to this area here, which has this chip, which I'm guessing is a power supply chip, associated to that inductor in the back. We've got the five buttons, which aren't just used in the case of the, this unit. You can actually test the outputs by pressing a button and it will actually light the corresponding output just for testing your wiring. But you can also press them in combinations to do a factory reset or put them into other modes. Here are the programming ports uh, for those uh, devices and a row of LEDs for the indicators. It has plenty of LEDs. It's got a signal quality bar, which in our case has mostly been high, which hasn't helped. It's got the status, which uh, is multicolour. Uh, and that just gives you, if it's static flash or flashing, it indicates different things. The mode it's set into an error state or if, uh, it, if it's actually receiving data. These little chips down here, five of them, are gate drivers. That's probably because the MOSFETs can be driven at very high frequencies to make them compatible with camera use uh, in the television and film industry. And that, more or less, just leaves this here. This is in the vicinity of the, um, the DMX input and output port. And it's a little rotary switch that can switch between uh, no termination resistor, or if you've got it set as a... Say, for instance, you've got it set as a DMX input, but it's not the last in the line, it's just looping in. There'll be no termination resistor. If it's the last in the line, um, you will put a termination resistor in that, which I think is probably this one. 102 ohms, quite an odd value. But if you have it in wireless mode, you turn it the other direction to the wireless position and it puts a 143 ohm resistor across, which is basically providing the source end termination resistor, well, not the termination, the source end resistor of the network that's used to prevent signal reflections on long cable runs. That's fundamentally it. It is what I would expect from a city theatrical design. It's a nice, logical and fairly simple design with all the secret sauce stored in this. Could this be a custom program DSP? Um, and well, this chip here, it's the software that makes it all work and that is where the complexity will be. Um, the complexity is particularly high. It can transmit multiple universes of DMX to these units and you can choose which universe this one's on. And this one can, uh, it can put out the LED drive signals as well as the data because that's what one of these was being used for. We had three in each riser, which is a, a mobile platform used on a stage. Um, one was uh, in the costume of one of the performers. One was doing the down glow LED lighting that makes the underside of the riser. If this was the riser, it makes the underside of it glow on the stage. And the other one was using the perimeter lighting LED strip and also putting DMX out to trigger the video cue on the video wall that the performers are performing on. 
as it goes through complex patterns during the performance and cosmic star fields. So that is it. Um, it's a nice solid hardware design, but I do feel that unless our situation has been particularly an unusual situation, and certainly we had problems with the units dropping off the radio uh, signal and locking up, this is a, still a young product, I think. Um, but once they've resolved the firmware, uh, it should be quite an interesting product. I'm trying to be nice. We've not had a good to This has been the the bugbear of the job uh, just because uh, there have been issues. And uh, when the TV crews came in to film our show uh, and their uh, cameras were all operating on 2.4 gigahertz too, I believe, and, and really absolutely handing it out so they got priority over signal above all else, um, it knocked out quite a lot of our stuff. It was not thrilling. It made us wonder you know, can we, is there a way to use the 900 megahertz in the UK? Because it's going to be much quieter than 2.4 gigahertz. But yes, <clears throat> other than the teething problems, and there are teething problems, I'm sure they'll resolve them. Um, other than that, uh, they're very interesting units. They have lots of applications in the theatre industry and the television and film industry too. But um, yeah, I think it's a product that is young still. And once they've resolved those uh, other issues, I mean, it may just be we got unlucky in our, our RF environment. Maybe there was just rogue stuff transmitting without proper regard to RF protocols. Um, it's hard to tell. So much stuff in an outdoor venue like that. Uh, but uh, including all the firearm systems, not sure what frequency they transmit on. Yeah, it was an interesting experience. The main thing is that at this point in time, most of the effects have triggered. The video has been pretty reliable, which is good, the video triggering. Um, but yes, look forward to using them in the future, but hopefully they'll iron out any little bugs they may have.